Hello everyone and welcome back to the Psyched YouTube channel. In today's episode of Psychology 101, we will discuss one of the most fascinating concepts in psychology, namely theory of mind. Theory of mind is an important socio-cognitive skill that involves the ability to attribute mental states such as beliefs, emotions, knowledge, intents and desires to other people. It involves the awareness that the mental states that I experience are different from the mental states that you experience. This ability to predict and infer the mental states of others and to understand that these may differ from our own has been shown to develop throughout our childhood. Research has shown that theory of mind is typically attained in children around the age of 4. This has often been tested in children using false belief tasks. These are experimental tasks that are designed to test the ability among children to infer that another person who does not possess the same knowledge as them may develop false beliefs. An example of a false belief task is the famous Salian experiment. In this experiment, children are presented with a short skit involving two dolls named Sally and Anne. While Sally has a basket, Anne has a box. In the skit, Sally takes a marble that she's playing with and she places it in her basket. When she leaves, Anne takes the marble from Sally's basket and she hides it in her box. When Sally returns, the child who watched the skit is asked the question, where will Sally look for her marble? Because the child saw the skit, they know that the marble is no longer in Sally's basket and that it is actually now in Anne's box. However, Sally, who doesn't know this, will have the false belief that her marble is still in her basket. The ability of the child to distinguish between their knowledge that the marble is in Anne's box and Sally's false belief that the marble is still in her basket requires a theory of mind. It requires the ability to understand that others may possess beliefs that are different from ours and that others do not always possess the same knowledge about an event as we do. Thus, a child with a developed theory of mind will accurately be able to predict that Sally will look for her marble in her basket. The Sally Ann experiment and other false belief tasks have been used in many studies that investigate theory of mind and has consistently found that children below the age of 4 often fail these tasks. These findings would indicate that kids under the age of 4 may struggle with distinguishing between the knowledge that they possess with the lack of knowledge that others may have. This would in turn indicate that the theory of mind is not yet fully developed as they seem to struggle with attributing and inferring the mental states of others. However, research using other measures of theory of mind has indicated that theory of mind may still be present to some degree in children below the age of 4. Research has for instance shown that while 3 year olds typically tend to fail the Sally Ann task and other more explicit forms of the false belief tasks, they still show some understanding that others may possess false beliefs. This has been shown using more implicit forms of the false belief task. While explicit false belief tasks such as the traditional Sally Ann experiment require the participants to both understand the complexities of the questions posed by the experimenter and to provide linguistic responses to these questions, these requirements are avoided when using more implicit measures of the awareness of false beliefs in others. One example of an implicit false belief task was used in a study conducted by Onishi and by Ergon in 2005. In this important experiment, 15-month-old children performed a false belief task that was similar to the Sally Ann experiment. In their experiment, children were instructed to watch as an experimenter placed a toy in one of two boxes, either a green one or a yellow one. In some trials, when the experimenter would place the toy in the green box for example, the toy was moved to the yellow one without the experimenter seeing it. Then, when the experimenter would look for their toy, they would either search for it in the green box where they placed it, or in the yellow one where the toy now actually was. As adults with a fully developed theory of mind, we would predict that a person who doesn't know that the toy has changed location would look for the toy in the same location where they placed it, i.e. the green box. This is because a person who is unaware that their toy has been moved would have the false belief that their toy is still where they left it. What distinguishes this experiment from other explicit false belief tasks is that rather than asking the children to provide declarative answers to where they believe the experimenter will look for their toy, the experimenters instead use the technique known as violation of expectation. This is a technique that is often been used to study infant cognition and is based on the idea that infants will look at an object for a longer duration of time when they are surprised, which occurs when an event takes place that violates their expectations. 
The results of the experiment show that when the experimenters would reach for the toy in a yellow box, the children would look at this box for a significantly longer period of time as compared to when the experimenter would look for the toy in the green box. In other words, when the experimenter would look for the toy in a different location than where they would have the false belief that the toy was still located in, the children's expectations were violated. This was true even though the child knew that the toy had changed location from the green box to the yellow one. In other experimental trials, the experimenter would place the toy in one of the boxes, for example the green one, but would now watch as the toy was moved from the green box to the yellow one. In these trials, the results of the study were reversed. When the experimenter would reach for the toy in the green box, the children would look at this box for a significantly longer period of time as compared to when the experimenter would reach for the toy in the yellow box. Again, this shows that the children formed an expectation that the experimenters would look for the toy in the location where they would believe the toy was located in, which in this case was the yellow box. These expectations were violated when the experimenter behaved otherwise. These results indicate that children as young as 15 months old are able to predict the actions of others based on the beliefs that they are expected to have, and these expectations will be violated when their predictions are incorrect. Thus, even though children below the age of 4 tend to fail the traditional false belief tasks, the results of the study showed that children as young as 15 months old may still be able to show some form of theory of mind and are able to attribute false beliefs to others. An important question to ask is, how is it possible that children below the age of 4 tend to fail explicit false belief tasks like the traditional Salian experiment, but are able to pass more implicit false belief tasks like in the study by Onishi in Bayegon? One potential explanation is that children under the age of 4 struggle with providing declarative answers in explicit false belief tasks because those tasks require complex cognitive functions which are still immature in these young children. For example, in order for a child to be able to accurately perform these explicit false belief tasks, not only do they need to be able to provide a declarative response, they also need to be able to understand the linguistic content of the question. As their cognitive functions may not yet be sufficiently developed, children below the age of 4 may struggle with fully understanding what is being asked of them. In the Sally Ann task, for example, being able to understand that the children are meant to state where they believe Sally will look for her marble rather than stating where the child knows the marble is, is quite complex. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to ring that notification bell and we'll see you in the next video.